Good morning. Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday. Welcome to all of you who are in person, and welcome to all of you who are joining us this morning on YouTube or, la or on Facebook, and later in the week on YouTube or on television. We are glad you have joined us on this special day as we remember the saints um, of our congregation. You will notice in the bulletin today, and also the bulletin that's posted online, we have a prayer for you to pray at home if you would like to remember your loved ones um, at home as you light a candle. I think on these special days, it's difficult for us not to be together um, as we normally would on an All Saints Day. And so to have this opportunity to remember loved ones at home uh, we hope we will find that helpful for you. As we remember those who have gone before us in this rite of remembering the saints, we are reminded that in holy baptism, God unites all the faithful into one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the church on earth and the church in heaven. The lighting of the candle calls us back to the lighting of the Christ candle at baptism. And the candle symbolizes our Lord's glorious Easter triumph over the darkness of death. And so the candles here and at home are a visual reminder that in our baptism, we are both buried and raised with Christ. On earth or in heaven, the light of Christ shines in all of the baptized. So today, I pray you find comfort as we remember the saints here and we remember the saints who have been important in our lives. If you are watching on Facebook, I invite you to put in the comments section the many saints um, in our lives and who have touched your life, whom you want to remember today. Next Sunday, we are going to welcome new members to our saviors. I think it is amazing how even in this really unusual times, we have found ways to celebrate, to celebrate um, our graduates with cupcakes and quilts, to celebrate Holy Communion with our sixth graders, and now to celebrate um, our new members next Sunday at both services and also Wednesday the 11th. We are still the church during this time. God is with us, God will continue to be with us, and God will get us through these difficult times. A couple of other announcements. Our youth choir and youth group are gathering on Sundays at 4 o'clock here at church. And then also Youth News, please watch for the upcoming information on a basket auction online. The flowers you see here today are in memory of Joanne Peterson. This um, Thursday, we begin our learning together, Faith and Race, uh, here at Our Saviors. It begins on Thursday, meet in the upper room at 6 o'clock. In our prayers, we continue to pray for all of those that you see on our prayer list. And so with that, we will begin worship. We begin with the call to worship. Please stand. Our call to worship is from Exodus 15:2. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. People of God, come and celebrate the story of our God. Here we will discover the great things God has done. Stories of compassion and mercy, redemption and love. We are reminded that God's relationship with us lasts forever. God's story is passed down from generation to generation. We remember the great ancestors of our faith from Abraham and Sarah, Ruth and Naomi, and all the saints that live in the light eternal. <clears throat> we worship as we live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. On All Saints Day, we commemorate all the saints of the church, both known and unknown. We give thanks for those we have lost in the past year. We remember their lives, who they loved, and how they lived. Help us to follow their example and learn from their experience. Continue to inspire us by their faithful witness that we too might join in bringing your justice, mercy, and peace to our world. Today we remember Levan Boyum, Cheryl Clausen, Carl Ank. John Enright. Art Fox. Herb Halverson. Randy Howe. Shirley Jorgensen. Howard Olson. Shar Pankert. Marcy Perry. Joanne Peterson. Bruce Severin. Kay Simpson. Alan Steinbeiser. Maxon Weber. Joanne Wintheiser. We celebrate the lives of those we have named, O God, and lift up many more in our hearts. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is from Ruth, the first chapter, verses 1 to 5. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Emelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Word of God, word of life. The second reading today is Psalm 139, verses 7 to 14. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, and night is as bright as the day. 
darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. We continue our story from the book of Ruth. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her, uh, to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt, uh, as the, you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters, why will you go with me? Do I have sons in my womb that they might become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought, even if I thought there was a hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So for our children's message today, I wanted to talk about candles. Because candles are a really cool thing. I don't know about any of you, but did you have a jack-o'-lantern last night? Anybody? I didn't make one. My wife and son, Theo, made one and it looked really nice. That's how you know I didn't make it. I can't do that, that's not my skill. But we put a candle in it and that light shone out from that jack-o'-lantern. And it's really cool because when the sun goes down and when we have our lights off, it's just that candle showing light off. And we lit these candles this morning to remember people who have gone before us, to remember grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-great-great-great-grandparents, those people who inspire us, those people who love us. And the reason we light these candles is because they show forth light. 
in the same way that those people who went before us show forth light? These candles bring light into the shadow of life. So we could have lit a lot more candles because there have been a lot of people who have gone before us. But they're always with us in memory and with us in the people who continue to lead us. So we remember those saints today and remember that we will be saints someday too. We will lead people in life. So let's say a word of prayer. So repeat after me. Perfect. Holy God, thank you for the saints. Help us to live in their light and share the love that they showed us. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So usually when I work on a sermon, I spend time looking for the weird thing, the thing that doesn't make sense, the, the strange thing that just doesn't fit with what I think. Because that's usually where I find the most interesting bits of Scripture. The stuff that doesn't make sense usually leads to a deeper understanding of who God is. But that's usually when we're talking about a well-known story. Ruth and Naomi is not that well-known of a story. We don't really talk about it that much. So I wanted to talk about something a little more universal. Family. What is a family? I mean, there's a lot of different definitions of family. Usually has to do with transferring genetics, with passing on your genetics. But that's not the only way that it happens. So I thought I would share about my family. I grew up with two incredible grandfathers. I loved them. They, they really taught me a lot. And I grew up with two unbelievably wonderful grandmothers. But there were stories of my third grandmother. And I never really understood what was happening there. I never knew who she was. I knew Grandma Ruth. I knew Grandma Marilyn. But then there was this third, Grandma Dell. See, Grandma Dell had passed away before I was born. So I never got to know her. But Grandma Marilyn had married my grandpa when I was still a baby. So she was the only grandma on that side of the family that I knew. And it took me until middle school to realize that she wasn't my biological grandma. It just never clicked in my head. But then I learned that she wasn't related to me by blood but it didn't change our relationship. She was still my grandma. She was still the one who brought me places when my parents were busy. She cared for me, she loved me. She gave me foot massages. Very strange relationship, you guys. But she was still my grandma. I wasn't related to her, but she was my grandma. And that's kind of the weird thing about family. See, I told you I focus on the weird stuff. Family isn't just who's related to you by blood. Family's a lot more complicated than that. I did a wedding a couple weeks back for Derek Anderson, and when he was talking about his family, he was pointing, and I thought it was funny because... Yeah, I know your family, Derek. I've, I've met them quite a few times. They're around here quite a bit. But he wasn't pointing to his parents or to his siblings. He was pointing to the people he served with in the military. They were his military family. And that wasn't a euphemism. It wasn't a platitude. Those people were his family. Family looks so different to so many people. 
And even if you aren't close with your family, your biological family or your adoptive family, you find family wherever you go. Those people who you love more than you thought you could. Those people who care for you more than you thought you could. That's what this story is about. In the ancient world, in the ancient world, daughters-in-law would not stay with their mothers-in-law. That'd be ridiculous because they go back to their families, they marry, and that's just kind of the way that that world worked. But Ruth found family in a deeper way. She stayed with Naomi, and they cared for each other. They were a family. It didn't look like any other family that was around, but it was their family. And the reason that I wanted to focus on that is because family gets even more complicated when we come to church, because that's what we are. We're a family as a church. When we read in Scripture that we are siblings in Christ, that's not a euphemism. That's not a phrase. That's, that's what we are. My son in this congregation has so many grandparents. He has so many aunts and uncles. He has so many siblings because we together make up the family of God. That's incredibly special. And it has a special meaning today. When we celebrate those saints who have gone before us, some of us remember our grandparents. Some of us remember great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents. We live in their memories. They are a part of who we are. Grandma Dell, my grandma who I never met, she raised my dad. My dad is who he is because of Grandma Dell. And I am who I am because of my dad. And so even though I never met Grandma Dell, she's still a part of who I am. That is a powerful celebration. That we are siblings in Christ. That we are family together. And it stretches beyond our memory. It stretches beyond our written history. It stretches so far back. Because the body of Christ is this infinite group of people, this cloud of witnesses who continue to lead us. So as we remember these saints today, we know that they are still with us in how they loved and how they lived. And they're going to continue being with us even once we're gone. When I pass away, I know that my grandma Dell will be carried on in Theo. He never met her. I never met her. But in that incredible bond of family, we're together. So I want us to take a minute because we've named some saints today. We named the saints who left us this year. But we all have quite a few saints. We have those people who continue to guide us. And I want us to take a second to think about them. Because some of your saints, I might never have met. But I can get to know them through you. I can be led by their example by how you lead me. That's what it means to be a family, to be connected with those bonds. 
to share with one another more deeply than we thought possible. So think about those saints who have gone before us. And I want to just take a second to sit in some quiet. And if you want to name some of those saints aloud, go ahead. If you want to name some saints on the Facebook comments, go ahead. If you want to just name them in your heart, you can do that. So let's take a moment to remember those saints. Remember those saints. Let them inspire you. And share the memory of those saints with your family who are gathered. Share the memory of those saints with everyone you meet. Share the love that they taught, the hope that they brought, and the peace that they continue to bring. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for those saints who have gone before us and those saints who still walk among us. Those grandparents, those parents, those siblings in Christ that continue to lead us in our daily lives. Help us to live in their example and to follow you in everything we do. Help us remember that there is nothing that can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, and there is nothing that can separate us from the love that we have for these saints. And on the last day, O oh God, raise us up to share in the endless feast with them, those saints who live in light. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every blessing, your son cared for all who suffer. Pour out your spirit of compassion now on all who are in need of healing. We pray especially for Carol, Vernon, Russ, Dixie, Artis, Marilyn, Sharon, Joyce, Roger, Dave, Brad, Tom, Bill, Diane, Kevin, Wally, 
Darla, Glenn, Khan, Linda, Paul, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Pour out your spirit of mercy on all who grieve the loss of loved ones and all who have experienced grief during the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every time and place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Make us aware of the gifts you give us each day. Bring comfort and hope as we grieve. We name some of those things today that we feel we have lost in these last months. Jobs, celebration of milestones, family and friend gatherings, visiting vulnerable loved ones, funerals, school activities, being with our faith family at Our Saviors. Remind us, Lord, that you are faithful and walk with us during this time. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to share God's peace with one another with uh, words, words of peace or a wave or whatever, whatever way you can share peace with one another. Offering today is taken as you leave worship. Um, the offering plates are in back. They're also being taken. We have giving that is available online. Let us pray together our offering prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the great thanksgiving. So the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we make our way out after the uh, end of the service, we do have the communion cups labeled. It says uh, the prepackaged ones that are homemade, those are wine and a wafer. And then we have the prepackaged ones that we bought, 
Those are grape juice with a wafer, and then we also have gluten-free out there as well. So receive this blessing. Saints who are here this morning, saints who are gathered online, this morning we commune with those saints who have gone before us. We join in the glorious celebration of the Lord's Supper across age, across time, across space. We join in this celebration knowing that this bread and this wine feed us and connect us to all of our Christian family. Know that and go in Christ's name. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace, inspired by the saints who live in light. Thanks be to God. Thank you.